Alrighty. So, hello everyone. This is Funny here, and welcome to a new Let's Play of a visual novel called Higarashi When They Cry. Oh, seventh expansion presents Welcome to Hinamizawa When They Cry. So, one of my uh, friends gifted me the chapter one Onikakushi. But yeah, aside of all things go. Hmm, that reminds me. Do I even have the volume for this one? Let me check the settings real quick. Just to make sure everything's up to par. Yeah, the volume mixer is good and let's see volume. There we go. All right, so I played a little bit of this, but I didn't get into the to a lot. I need to record this nonstop. Well, so yeah, let's start. Onikakushi opening. Welcome to the world of Higarashi when they cry. The Onikakushi arc will be the opening, inviting you into this world. Don't play tough, please just enjoy life in Hinamikaza to the fullest. The difficulty is extremely high, but I hope you will enjoy the reward. Now, I never watched the anime series before, but I, I know few people told me that the visual novel is somewhat more better but we'll see about that <laughs> difficulty extremely high yeah I'm playing this during the middle of the night so we'll see about that I may have to like what uh, record in the middle of the night or something but oh well <laughs> evil girl laughed there to laughter please do not lament I will forgive you even if the world will not forgive you please do not lament Let's see so please tell me what will it take for you to forgive me Frederica Bern Castell something I can't read this language oh man this is a work of fiction any resemblance to somewhat exactly coincidental eight 1983, early summer, 58th year of the Showa era. Hmm. If I was if I was going to be ripped apart anyways, having my body ripped apart would have been far better. I trusted her. No, I still trust her. Even in this very moment, I trust her. But I'm starting to realize. I only wanted to trust her because I refused to see the truth. It was as if I was trying to convince myself in such a silly, sobbing voice. And those tears, those tears making a mess on my face. That mechanical, repetitive sound finally stilled and everything fell silent. Only the cry of the cicadas remained annoyingly loud and yet... I felt as if I could still hear her voice, but that's not possible. She is no longer speaking. The only one crying is me. She never cried. Even when she repeated those words over and over, she never expressed any emotion because there were none to show. If she had no tears to shed for me, then I shouldn't need to shed any for her. Then why this pain? My eyes getting moist. Why was this happening? I still want to believe I hadn't been split apart. That's enough, right? Inside me, an inner voice whispered gently. My spirit had suffered enough. And countless times I've wavered over whether I should just throw the battered thing away. Except I've stubbornly refused to do that, haven't I? 
I feel better if I just throw it away. Even knowing that, I chose to believe, didn't I? I have to, only I can understand that painful struggle and appreciate it. Hey, me? I've tried more than enough. I'll acknowledge that much. So, isn't it alright to just take the easy way out? Besides, I'm not throwing it, throwing it away. I'm leaving it behind with her. Like flowers by a grave. Now then. Calm your nerves. Even though you can't feel your, feel your right arm, just lift it up. And with every swing, forget a little more. That kindness made me happy. That adorable smile brought me joy. I liked petting your head, head pat. I loved how demure you were. Because this will be the last time. Because when I swing this down, I'll forget. This is my first and last bouquet for you. Bouquet. For you. Oh man. Perhaps I really did. Love you. Ah, so this is the prologue, eh? Dang, look at that. I'm hearing some noises. Alright, hold on. Just in case, I'll just turn it down a little bit. Just want to make sure if uh, my my uh, commentary is don't want to be like all drowning out. Anyway, let's continue reading. Somebody has been apologizing for a while now. I wonder what she's apologizing for. It felt wrong to eavesdrop, so I tried to ignore it. It had been a while since I had last went to this city. I only returned to attend the funeral of a relative. Even though I'd lived there until last month, I have found the bustle of the city to be overwhelming. Those skyscrapers and the multi-lane roads. The melodious cacophony of the cross rock. Even the campaign speeches blaring in front of the station felt nostalgic. The place where I live now isn't nearly as lively. There's only the chirping of lout, locusts, and the babbling of brooks. But yeah, I'm recording this during the middle of the night. I might as well upload it the next morning. My voice is going to drown out though, My, because it will hurt when I read a lot. And the cry of the Higurashi, the evening cicadas. Rather than making me feel lonely, that, quiet, that quietness had begun to instill a sense of serenity. There is nothing where I'm living now. I don't just mean there aren't any burger joints. There aren't even vending machines. No music stores, no restaurants, and no arcades. Even an ice cream parlor would be unlikely. The nearest town has some stuff like that, but it's an hour away by bike. But come to think of it, it wasn't really a big deal. There were music stores and arcades and ice cream parlors, parlors, but it wasn't like I ever hung out at any of them. I had lived in the city for 10 years and never once been to an ice cream parlor. I should have, ne I should have gone at least once. It's only now that I'm starting to regret that, regret that a little. Somebody is still apologizing. Who is she apologizing to? She's apologized so much, so just f forgive her already. There's no reason anyone should ever need to apologize so much. I started to feel a bit annoyed at whoever was refusing to forgive her. No matter how bad the mistake, there's nothing that can't be forgiven. There's no such thing as an ir irreparable mistake. You just need to be more careful next time. She's still apologizing even now. Then, has she really done something that can't be fixed? I have no idea what she's done, but it can't be fixed, then that's all the more reason to forgive her. No matter how much she apologizes, nothing will change. But even so, she keeps apologizing in such a heartbreaking voice. Hey you, the one she's apologizing to. 
Why don't you just go ahead and forgive her? She's apologizing in such a pathetic voice. Keiichi, we're almost there. Wake up. I was finally aroused from my nap by my father's prodding. The hell's going on here? It seemed the train had reached its final stop. We spent hours riding some everything from the bullet train to the local routes. Oh yeah, I remember I was in South Korea. Oh yeah, the bullet train. It's the amazing experience when it comes to, you know... When it comes to uh, transportation, that is. It was hard to believe that the landscape beyond the window in the city I was in half a day ago were in the same country. No, that they were even from the same era. From there, we take a car deeper into the mountains. Dang, look at these fancy backgrounds. Past where the dense forest encroaching on the mountains road suddenly opened up. Whoa. There, where I live now, Hinamizawa. Man, look at this village. Looks peaceful, eh? I remember this one anime, Slice of Life, Non Non Biori. I wish I can live on the countryside once I retire one day. Oh well. Alright, loading. Hir Higurashi when they cry. What's gonna happen there? Even though we were approaching summer, the morning air still had a frigid bite. Although in exchange, you could fill your lungs up with crisp, clean air. Ah, the good old fresh air, eh? Flipping up open the window, I was greeted with a verdant expanse. Nothing but trees. The neighboring house was far away on the other side. So I was probably the only one enjoying that view and that air. I filled my lungs with another deep breath. Since I started living in Hinamizawa, I learned that even air had its own taste. Wait, for real? His own taste. I quickly finished getting ready for school and headed downstairs for breakfast. My mother was the only one there. My father was nowhere to be seen. Where the hell is my father at? He was probably up working until the- oh yeah, that makes sense. Until the early morning. Dad had a rather unconventional job as a painter. It's such a laid-back profession. Get up when you want, sleep when you want, and work when you want. I was so jealous of that easy-going lifestyle. I wish I have an easy-going lifestyle too. I even wrote for school that I wanted to be a painter when I grew up. Dad was ecstatic about that. It was just because it looked easy I never tell him that though. Mom laid breakfast out on the table. Seaweed, pickled vegetables, raw egg, and grilled salmon. My mom was such a good cook, it was scary. A perfect, immaculate, ideal breakfast. Unlike my dad, who didn't even know the meaning of the word schedule, my mom never squandered any time or effort. She hummed a little tune as she brought over the miso soup. It seemed like she was in a good mood today. I'm so happy you've been waking up early since we moved here, Keiichi. If I don't wake up early, I don't, won't have time to eat breakfast. I thought I was being cute, responding with a wisecrack after being praised for being good. Full bowl of rice, or will half be enough? Pile it on. First, I savored the steaming hot rice with the seaweed. After that, I covered it with the egg. Between bites of rice, I enjoyed the crunch of the pickles. Not bad at all. Excellent, as usual. Have you ever tried pickled radish before? I'm asking a random question. Watching me clean my plate, Mom gave me a warm smile. I'm so happy you haven't skipped breakfast ever since we moved here, Keiichi. I was not a morning person when we lived in the city. I slept right until the last minute before school and rarely ate breakfast. Boycotting the breakfast Mom made me each morning. That was probably the only way I could protest being forced to attend cram school. I guess that was what you called by rebellious phase. 
I wouldn't so much as look at the breakfast she made. I mean, she woke up early every day to make. If I could go back in time, I'd slap myself. <laughs> wow. Mindful of the time, Mom rushed me along with a wide grin. Isn't it about time to meet up with Reina chan Hurry, hurry. Mom really seemed to enjoy the fact that her son was going to school with a girl. Reina is one of my classmates. She really loves looking after people, coming to meet me every day without fail. Without what? Without fail, okay. I thought I said frail. The way I looked at it, a guy my age walking to school with a girl was just lame. But, well, keeping a classmate waiting for me every day wouldn't be very considerate. I know, right? Seriously though, how long does Reina wait there for me every morning? Taking one last gulp of the miso soup, I raced for the door. Please thank Reina-chan for the pickles. Come to think of it, those pickles weren't store-bought, were they? If I'd known that, I would have savored them a bit more. If it, if it wasn't store-bought, then it would be like homemade, right? I mean, I know that. Ah, look at the outside of the house. This is fancy. A bit more. Let's see. Morning! Alright, what do we got here? Keiichi kun! Good morning! Her cheerful greeting was as fresh as the morning itself. You're always so early. You should try sleeping in sometime. If I sleep in, I keep, I'll keep you waiting. She's so consci... Consentis... Consciented. <laughs> How do I put... And such a good person. Conscientious? Yeah. If that ever happens, I'll just leave you behind. Keiichi-kun, you're so cold. I wait for you all the time. I'll leave you in the dust. Without looking back. Why are you so mean? Why? Reina had a slightly troubled look on her face. Okay, so the first girl we meet is Reina. Interesting. Toying with her was rather fun because of how quickly her mood changed. I'm kidding. I'll wait. I'd wait for you. With those words, Reina seemed to relax. Her face flushed bright red. Ah, thank you. I'd wait forever until you came, Reina. No matter how long. Uh, uh, for... F forever. Reina turned bright red, steam rising from her head as her brain short-circuited. She's especially weak to this sort of talk. It's quite rare to find someone this fun to tease. Have you ever read a romance novel, Reina? Huh. Uh, I haven't. Never read any before. From that response, I gathered she was interested in them, but was too embarrassed to actually buy one. I couldn't imagine what would happen if she did read one. She'd probably turn red and pass out. Oh yeah, mes message from mom. She says thanks for the pickles. It was nothing. You're welcome. How are they? Not too salty? They weren't that salty. Actually, they had a pretty light flavor to them. It would have been fine to just be honest and say they were good, but apparently I couldn't be that forthright. I'd like to ask something before that. Were you the one who pickled them, Reyna? Or was it your mom? Huh? Huh? Why do you ask? Were... Were they too salty? No, I didn't even say that. Her attitude completely changed as she began to panic frantically. <laughs> frantically. Was it you, Reyna, or was it your mom? Why are you asking me who made them? Well, why? Depending on who made them, my opinion of them might change drastically. Huh. Uh-uh. She counted frantically on her fingers, trying to remember the amount of salt she used to pickle them. It wasn't like I was trying to tease her, but I couldn't have stopped myself. Guys who take pleasure in this kind of thing are probably the worst. Guys like me. Oh boy. Reyna nervously opened and closed her mouth over and over, trying to muster a uh, response. It was me. Delicious. Huh? Pretty good, just, just like the last ones. They went perfectly with the rice. 
Her face went bright red again. She was completely spacing out. It truly was a lot of fun to tease her. I pray that Reyna never gets taken advantage of by some lowlife. Keep at it, Reyna. I'll train you until you handle it like the average person. Or so I decided for myself. Let's go. If we keep Mion waiting, we'll never hear the end of it. Seeing as she just keeps spacing out otherwise, I called Reyna back to reality so we could make our way to school. This strange, easily flustered girl is... is Reyna Ryugu. I've only known her for about a month, but I've come to realize it's not just her name that's strange. Alright, here we go. Where are we at? Mi-chan! Good morning! Coming up to the next rend... Rendiz... Rendiz... I can't even pronounce that. Rendizviz point. Rendizviz point. We saw another por person waiting for us. Noticing us, she waved. Ah, finally, finally. You, you two are late. Usually, you're the one who's late. In sharp contrast to the diligent Reyna, this one marched to the beat of her own drum. She's Mian Sonozaki. For what it's worth, she's our senior and head of the class. Morning, Reyna. It's been a while, Kei-chan. How many years? I was only off... I was only off two days. <laughs> you don't say. You were so much cuter back then. Mian's gaze started on my chest and dropped straight down, focusing on the point between my legs. So she was saying it was my crotch that was cuter back then. Before you ask, just to be clear, I've never actually tried to show them to her. I've grown quite splendidly. Oh boy. You'd be surprised. Not only is he bigger, but he has a little mustache now. Being so engorged with energy every morning is quite a problem though. I'll introduce you next time, so be sure to greet him properly. Don't say next time, right now is just fine. Don't say next time, right now is just fine. How about letting the little guy get a breath of fresh morning air? I don't think I've ever heard talk... I don't think I've ever heard talk so dirty you could smell it fouling up the morning air before. Mion sure does act like an old man sometimes. Gotcha. Time for the big reveal. Hope you don't regret it. As my hand reached for my fly, Reyna began to ramble in the near panic. Hey, hey, what are you talking about? What are you... What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Red-faced and flustered, Reyna tried to play dumb but it was obvious she knew exactly what we were talking about. How was it? Seeing the city again. Mian switched gears, dropping the dirty talk and changed the topic to something more befitting the pleasant morning. I only went for a funeral, I didn't have much time. So yeah, did you look for it? That thing I asked for. You're not listening at all. I just came back from a funeral. I didn't have any time to look around in toy stores. Uh, tsk, tsk, tsk. Toy stores and hobby shops are completely different, you know? It's really difficult to get western stuff around here after all. Is this about games again, Mi-chan? Mia nodded proudly as Reyna giggled. Yup, I wanted K-chan to bring me back a Westport catalog, you see. Westport was short for West Imported Games. Using that, abbre that abbreviation did make it sound pretty geeky. You can just get them to send you one in the mail, can't you? Well, guess I have two now. I'm going to get another game full of hot action. This time I like a game that's easy to understand. Mian is a board and card game enthusiast and I hear she's collected quite a lot of different ones. According to Reyna, Mian's room had has kind of become a museum for domestic and foreign games. If there's a game you think I'd understand, let me play too. Yeah, of course. 
If K-chan is up for it, I should warn you though, we're pretty tough. Just what I want. I play all sorts of games, I don't intend to lose. Whoa. Then we'll let you in the group this time, I guess. I guess. Bristling with joy from head to toe, Reina looked back and forth between me and Mion. Mion gave her an affirmative wink, and her expression perked up even further. I thought boys preferred playing outside more, so I figured you wouldn't want to. Reina laughed happily. From such a friendly conversation, you wouldn't think I had moved here less than a month ago. I understand that they did all they could to make a transfer student like me feel at home. I'll have to try harder to fit in so they won't feel like they have to try to make me feel welcome. I felt like if I acted a bit more open than I usually am, it should probably be about right for this place. About right for this place, okay. Oh, I need to thumbnail this. Oh, fuck. Son of a bitch. Alright. Hinamizawa was a really small village. Not only was there only one school, but there was only one class. That class encompasses all different grades and ages. There are about 30 students at different levels, and they all study in the same class. I'm told that long ago there used to be a bigger school building that they had actual separate classes. However, it seems something happened that made it become a single class and now it stayed that way out of tradition. I was shocked at first, but humans adapt pretty quickly. I've already gotten quite used to it. The sound of children playing started right from the morning. It was such a lively mood, it felt more like a kindergarten than a proper school, not that it was a bad thing. Mian, who had been walking in front of us up until then, suddenly let me take the lead. Right in front of the classroom door. So I was meant to slide the door open and enter the room first. Heh. <laughs> Too bad, I wasn't going to fall for that again. To think you'd give up the lead here. You meant for this to be a test of my skills. Mian chuckled with a haughty smirk on her face. What the fuck? What is it, you guys? Step back, Reina. It's dangerous. She's here. Huh? Then Satoko-chan is... Her name was Satoko Hojo. She was a disrespectful, impudent, posse kid. Oh, I thought he was going to say he's a, she's a piece of shit. The way she talks was annoying, but it would be immature to get worked up over just that. The real problem was this. Quite the obvious trap, a black board eraser wedged in the door. It's too obvious, Satoko. A haughty laugh came from beyond the door. Excellent, Keichan. I guess that means you win this round? No, this is Satoko we're talking about. I doubt this is it. After falling for such intricate traps since the day I transferred, I no longer let my guard down. Satoko liked to combine a variety of traps. Traps that were simply there to bait you into the main one. Traps that relentlessly kept coming at you like a sadistic Rube Goldberg machine. The list goes on. As well as being clever, they almost never misfire. Oh boy, this is some crazy shit. When you least expect it, she strikes. No escape, no time to relax. By the looks of it, this eraser is normal. No rocks or anything in it. I took a pretty heavy hit from a blackboard eraser loaded with rocks on my first day. So then why don't you just open the door and let it drop? That's what it is. That's what Sudoku was after. Making me focus my attention upwards, so as I lifted my hand to the door, There were thumbtacks stuck to the sliding door, handled with tape. A frightening trap. A potent and terrifying trap. No, my fingers will gonna cause a fucking bleeding if, if I get poked too hard, damn it. Concealed by using the blackboard eraser. An impressive combination, Satoko. But in the end, nothing more than a trivial machin machinations of a child. 
Assured of my frittery, I threw the door open and stepped into the room. I, feel, I felt something strange at my ankle. It was similar to the sensation of a jump rope catching on my leg. By the time I realized she had me, hook, line, and sinker, it was already too late. I began to fall in an almost picturesque manner. Kei-chan, watch out! Instantively reacting to Mion's shrill warning, I twisted my body in midair before I landed on the door on the floor. Ow, ow, ow! An inkstone filled to the brim was placed right where I would have landed. I shuddered, imagining this situation had I landed square on it. My, my, what do we have here? A fair morning to you, Keiichi-san. Aren't we a lively one this morning? Still sprawled in an awkward position, I was greeted by a mocking voice. That was a step up from your usual trap, Satoko. I haven't the faintest idea what you mean. You're quite unlucky this morning. You little... Ah, oh, whoa, whoa. It seemed I'd inadvertently sprained my back a little when I landed. Better than landing on that inkstone. Fuck, man. A small hand gently rubbed my head. Pain, pain, go away. The small, dainty hand continued to gently stroke my head. You didn't sprain your back or anything, did you? If you rub it like this, the pain disappears. I thought about asking how rubbing my head would help my back, but I didn't. It's not so much about what you actually do, it's the thought that counts. Yeah, thanks Rika-chan. The pain's going away now. Yay, Rika-chan, good morning! Good morning to you, Reina. A good morning to all. Rika-chan greeted each of us with an adorable little bow. It was infectious. Reina, Mion, and I all bowed back. Why the heck would, why the heck would he say infectious? <sighs> Weird. You're such a good kid, Rika-chan. So much better than Satoko. I glared over in her direction. Sodoko was whistling while rather deliberately trying to avoid eye contact. I am the very model of a good girl. A good girl wouldn't set those nasty traps and I call bullshit. Nothing but lies and slander. I'm getting slandered by a little girl who sets booby traps, God damn it! Exactly what proof... Wah! I picked up Sotoko by the back of her collar. She looks like a misbehaved cat when I do this. But a cat wouldn't be setting traps. She's much harder to deal with. I'm sorry. Try saying that. If you won't say it. I cocked my index finger on my thumb letting it tremble as I brought it closer to Satoko's forehead. I'm against violence. You don't even have any proof. Just so you know, my forehead flick really hurts. It can split plywood right in half. Eek! Stop! Get away from me, you beast! Don't say that in a way people will misunderstand. A small hand tugged on the back of my shirt. She's been lonely since you were gone for two days. Rika-chan really is just so... How could I do anything more after being told that? I gently released my grip on Satoko, who at this point was on the verge of tears. She still had her eyes clamped shut as she braced herself for the forehead flick. Whaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
Rika gently petted the head of her prankster friend. You would never guess those two are the same age. I think Sotoku could learn a thing or a million from Rika-chan. Okay, it's either a million, ten million, hundred million. Maybe she could learn a thing or a billion times from Rika-chan, from what I know. <laughs> Next time, set an even more amazing trap. Wait a minute. As she observed the scene, Reina's expression grew ecstatic as she began to, began to swoon. How... Satoko-chan is crying. Oh, Satoko-chan is crying. So cute. I guess that's what she said. You can't take them home. Good. But, but they're so cute. You can't, no matter how cute they are. But just for a bit is fine. Is fine. Reina kept a cute, cutesy face, even as outrageous ideas spewed from her mouth. According to Mian, Reina is ridiculously weak to cute things and always tries to take them home. She, she, she's high on the moe. Object or person. Stealing is bad, but abducting people is even worse. Give it up. Then I can just look. Just looking. That should be fine, right? Right? <laughs> oh boy. Reina swooned over Sadoko's crying form. If a girl ever goes missing in Hinamizawa, I'll be forced to turn Reina in to the authorities. Forgive me, Reina. I'll be sure to bring you care packages when they put you away. The teacher's coming. Quickly, clean everything up. Sotoko, that ink store that ink stone is yours, right? Just from Mian's single statement, the entire mood of the room shifted back to normal. The inkstone was bad, but the thumbtacks stuck to the door handle were an even bigger problem. I pulled the tape off carefully, making sure not to skewer myself. Even though Satoko was the one who set it up, every everyone had to pick it up had to pick it up after her. By the time the teacher entered the room, the bedlam from before had been neatly tidied up. <laughs> we made it in time. Rise. Intention. Mian gave out the morning commands. It's difficult being the teacher for all these different grades in one classroom. She has to teach something different to each one. But naturally, she ends up spending all her time with the younger kids. Reina and Mian being in the highest grade in the class end up mostly doing self-study. They even end up helping teach the younger kids, so it seems like they can never get to their own studies. They're actually way behind where my studies have progressed to. As a result, I'm pretty much taking over for the teacher and helping Reina and Mian with their studies. You're a pretty good teacher, keiji -kun. Easy to understand. Reina took a breather after finishing highlighting an important session. <sighs> Teaching is making me lose confidence. It makes me aware of how shallow my understanding of the subject is. They say that to teach someone something, you need to understand it backwards and forwards. So while you're teaching us, you're getting in your own practice. In contrast, this person over here is quite Latisse fair about things. For one, isn't she supposed to be in a higher grade than me? Look Mian, this is for your own good. If you don't take this seriously, there'll be trouble later on with these marks. It's not like I'm aiming to go on to a school. 
I'll be fine as long as I pick up what I need to know for the entrance exams a little at a time. Her staunch defiance was really something else. This was a different type of relax than somebody who already knew what was going to be on the entrance exams. Mi-chan, Keiichi-kun is doing his best to teach us. We need to try hard too. You're such a good and honest kid, Reina. I'll make sure you guys get accepted into a good school. Uh, excuse me. Sorry about that. Good school, yeah. What? what? Thanks so much. Especially you, Reina. Private lessons, just the two of us. P private le lessons. A puff of smoke shaped like a halo popped out of Reina's head. <sighs> exactly what kind of private lesson is she fantasizing about that's making her turn so red? <laughs> Good question. I'd like to hear the play-by-play -play about that next time. While Mion was flipping through her vocabulary flashcards, cards, she threw out a casual question. So in the city, do you have to study this much? If you don't know at least this much, you can't get into university. So you study just to get into a university? Well, yeah, basically. While knowing that this stuff won't ever come in handy in the future. Out here, you can get into university as long as your attendance is good, though. Really? Study equals entrance exams. Having that basic law of the universe so easily overturned sends me into a state of shock. That is right. There aren't really enough people around here to warrant weeding them out with an exam. If anyone get can get into university, then there's no need to be all uptight about this stuff, right? Well, that's true, but you should at least know stuff that's common knowledge. This old geezer thinks that instead of wasting time studying pointlessly, you should be spending your precious teen years doing more meaningful things. It was too profound of a statement to simply laugh off. But since it was Mian, it probably didn't actually have that deep of a meaning. Alright, thumbnail that. In place of a chime, the sound of the principal ha waving a hand bell drifted through the classroom. Kei-chan, we're done, we're done! It's our wonderful lunch time! In a complete 180 from her unmotivated state, Mian gave the commands that signaled the end of the morning period. Kei-chi-kun, let's have lunch! I might have been making a very troubled face. Reina smiled brightly at me. Alright, let's eat. Oh, what's happening? There seemed to be different cliches, even within the class. Most of them were divided up by gender and age, but our group was different. Our ages were different, we, bo we had both boys and girls, but we weren't reserved around each other. This level of openness makes a transfer student like me pretty happy. Reina and Mion pushed their desks together so they were facing each other. At the same time, Satoko and Rika-chan were slowly lugging their desks over as well. Keiichi-kun, hurry, hurry! Reina waved her chopsticks in an unrefined manner, trying to hurry me along. Unless everyone was together, they wouldn't even open their lunchboxes. Keiji san's lunchboxes most assuredly filled with nothing but bread crusts, like some sort of destitute plebeian. Why don't you just show it to us? Come now. Even though Satoka was hurling insult at me, she still wouldn't open the lid to her lunchbox until I was there. I pulled out my lunchbox swiftly and dragged my chair over to join the circle. Hey, sorry to keep you waiting. Well then, representative... Well then, representative me, please, please give the signal to start. At first, this was kind of embarrassing, but I got used to it pretty fast. At this point, I probably wouldn't even open my own lunchbox if someone else was too slow. Our ages and genders may have all been different, 
but we were all friends. Let's eat! The sound of our little five-part chorus echoed beautifully throughout the classroom. Really though, I've gotten pretty used to this group made up of all girls. Of course, there are other boys in the class, but they were all a lot younger so they were scared to approach me. Well, that's to be expected, I guess. Younger boys don't just see older boys as scary. Oh, the older boys as the scary boogeyman. I'm sorry about that. Compare that to girls, well, at least these girls aren't picky. We put all the side dishes in the middle where everybody was free to pick at them. I thought girls wouldn't mind sharing a meal with a guy, so I was a bit flustered joining in. However, Mia noticed that and teased me quite a bit. As the fruit of my efforts, I can now reach over and take sides from anybody's lunch. My my, isn't Sir Keiji's lunch extravagant today? My my, isn't Madame Sajoko's lunch extravagant as well? The stewed stuff has a nice look to it, rather trendy. Buying into the fight that Satoka was starting, our chopsticks locked in a cross counter stabbing into each other's lunch. My, how delicious! Oh, this taro is good! The stewed stuff is good too, even cold! After seeing my happy face, Rika-chan's expression broke into a little smile. I saved some from dinner last night. By the way, Sotoko and Rika-chan's lunches are always the same. It seems that Rika-chan makes it for both of them every day. Rika-chan made this too? These taste like mom's home cooking. I was honestly impressed. The carrot rosettes weren't from a mold, they were done by hand with a knife. That's not easy to do. I guess Rika-chan's just good at this sort of thing. She's really good at sewing, laundry, and stuff like that. Amazing, right? Amazing. Ama good at this sort of thing, eh? Rika is quite exceptional in many ways. Oh, ho, 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 ho. That's nothing for you to boast about. Reina's actually better at cooking than I am. Huh? Uh, well, you know. It seemed that the topic of conversation switched to Raina when she wasn't expecting it, making her blush and trip over her words. Raina's lunch really was the star of the table. Not only did it look good, it tasted good. <coughs> Everyone else pulled from Raina's lunchbox constantly. Everyone liked this wine so much before, so I made a lot this time. It's good, I hope? I hope? It's got high marks for me. Ah, Mion. You're taking too much. Knocking Mion's chopsticks aside, I reached down, trying to secure my own portion. Sotoko and Rika-chan reached over at the same time, and a struggle ensued. Oh, hold on. Oh man, everyone shoveled in mouthful after mouthful while praising it, and Reina's lunchbox was soon empty. It was kind of bad that no one thought to leave any for Reina, but Reina seemed rather satisfied as she looked on. How did you like it? Isn't Reina chan an extremely good cook too? Quite different from Keiji san. I said that's nothing for you to boast about. You're not much different from Kei-chan, Satoko. Can you tell the difference between broccoli and cauliflower yet? Satoko's face went pale. Hey, hey, even I can tell the difference between broccoli and cauliflower, you know? Of course I can. I really can. It's really hard for her to lie. Keiji-kun, 
Both taste good when they're boiled and topped with mayo, right? You shouldn't be picking on her. Michan too. Reina hur hur hurriedly tried to follow up, but Mian laughed. Excuse me, haughtily, as she drew closer to Sotoko. Well, well, just pretend it's a little homek lesson. Now then, Satoko, what's this? Mian lifted up her chopsticks. Between them was a piece of green stuff wrapped in bacon. But that's a spare Ooh. Mian made eye contact with me, and within three seconds, I had Rika-chan's mouth covered. Holding a piece of bacon wrapped asparagus and giving her two choices, she's pretty terrible. Um, well, uh, the yellow one is cauliflower. No, wait, the green one is cauliflower. So which? Hmm? Probably the yellow one is broccoli and the blue one is cauliflower, but the green one is, um, uh... Do you really know which is which? How about you just give up? I'd expect no less from the class representative. The oldest. The way she drives people into a corner just shows how much experience she has. This is just a punch, but being brought into the Son Sonozaki household must be quite the ordeal. I do know. I really do. Then answer the question. I know, I know. Oh man. She finally broke down and started crying. When she acts like this, she actually starts to seem her age. Ah, uh, oh, cute. Reina entered a state of euphoria as Sadoko bawled her eyes out. Reina was in a state of bliss as she rubbed her cheek against Sadoko's head and smothered her. Really, a very content face. One that wouldn't care if the world ended right then. It was that kind of smile. Reina, Reina, me, me, Mimi is picking on me. Wow, cute, cute. It's okay. Reina Nechan will take care of all those bad people who tease my little sister. What the? Oh, damn! Fish, boof, bam! It was like a flash of lightning. What was that just now? Both of Reina's fists shot out at supersonic speed, striking Mion and me squarely in our faces. Before we knew it, Mion and I were sprawled spread eagle on the floor, staring up at the ceiling with matching welts on our faces. Holy shit. This is the first time you've gotten one, right? Today, she went easy on us. Easy, you mean there's something harder than this? With that, Mian and I both slumped our heads back to the floor in unison. From now on, I'll be careful when I'm within striking distance of Reina. See, Satoko-chan, I took care of them. Mmm, cute. I want to take you home. Making sure Reina can see it. S Satoko stuck her tongue out at us. Tss, damn it all. Using Reina like a puppet. Rika-chan massaged our bruises without saying a word. Oh man. Oh man. Well, that was a... Oh boy, that was a long, long recording on this one. Alright, let's save here. Alright, there we go. Alright, I'll be ending it here for now. But next part, we're going to continue more of this. So, hope you guys enjoyed this. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. And... 
and thank you very much for if you guys are still watching this so have a good one